Hey there, history buffs and adventure seekers. Welcome to another thrilling episode where we unravel the mysteries of the past. Have you ever tried moving a couch and thought, man, this is impossible? It's a common struggle, right? Now imagine that struggle multiplied by a thousand. Picture this, trying to move a stone 20 times heavier than an elephant without the help of a forklift, wheels, or even horses. Sounds like a Herculean task, doesn't it? That's the mind-blowing challenge the Inca faced at Olantaytambo. These ancient engineers didn't have the luxury of modern technology, yet they accomplished feats that still leave us in awe today. Get ready to explore a time before power tools and heavy machinery, where manpower and ingenuity were the only tools available. The Inca relied on their deep understanding of physics and sheer determination. We're about to uncover the secrets of how the Inca, using only their minds and muscle, managed to create architectural marvels that still boggle our modern minds. Their precision in stone cutting and construction is nothing short of extraordinary. Fasten your seatbelts because we're traveling back in time to the heart of the Inca Empire. Imagine walking through the bustling streets of Cusco, the capital, and witnessing the grandeur of their civilization firsthand. So, how do you think they did it? Was it sheer manpower, advanced knowledge of engineering, or perhaps something more mysterious? Let's dive deep into the theories and evidence that historians and archaeologists have uncovered. Some believe the Inca used a combination of ramps, levers, and sheer human strength to move these colossal stones. Others suggest they might have had knowledge of techniques that have been lost to time. Modern engineers have tried to replicate these methods, often with mixed results. It's a testament to the ingenuity and resourcefulness of the Inca that their methods still puzzle us today. As we journey through the breathtaking landscapes of the Andes, we'll see how the Inca not only built structures but also integrated them seamlessly into their natural surroundings. Their respect for nature was evident in their architecture. The precision of their stonework is particularly fascinating. The stones fit together so perfectly that not even a blade of grass can slide between them. This level of craftsmanship is something that continues to inspire and amaze. So join us as we unravel the mysteries of the Inca's engineering marvels. From the massive stones of Olantaytambo to the intricate details of their stonework, we'll explore how this incredible civilization achieved the seemingly impossible. Let's get started. Okay, first things first. Let's tackle that name, Olantaytambo. It's a mouthful, right? You might be thinking, how on earth do I even begin to pronounce that? Well, don't worry, you're not alone. Many people stumble over it at first, but once you get the hang of it, it rolls off the tongue quite nicely. But I promise, this place is way cooler than its name is hard to pronounce. In fact, it's one of those places that once you visit, you can't stop talking about. It's like a hidden gem that you just have to share with everyone you know. Nestled high in the Peruvian Andes, Olantaytambo is like stepping into a lost world. Imagine a place where the air is crisp and clean, and the views are nothing short of breathtaking. The mountains rise majestically around you, creating a natural amphitheater that feels both grand and intimate at the same time. Imagine a place where towering stone terraces climb the mountainsides, each one meticulously crafted by hand. These terraces aren't just for show. They were used for agriculture, allowing the Inca to grow crops at high altitudes. It's a testament to their ingenuity and understanding of the land. And temples built from gigantic, precisely cut stones seem to defy gravity. These stones fit together so perfectly that you can't even slide a piece of paper between them. It's a marvel of engineering that still baffles experts today. This isn't just another ancient ruin. It's a living, breathing piece of history that you can walk through and touch. Every stone, every pathway, every structure tells a story of a civilization that was both advanced and deeply connected to its environment. Olantaytambo was a fortress, a religious center, and a royal estate all rolled into one. It was a place of great importance, both strategically and spiritually. The Inca rulers would come here to plan their conquests, perform sacred rituals, and enjoy the beauty of their surroundings. It was basically the Inca version of a Swiss army knife, multifunctional and seriously impressive. Whether you were a warrior, a priest, or a king, Olantaytambo had something for you. It was a place where the practical and the spiritual came together in perfect harmony. But here's the thing that makes Olantaytambo truly special. Those massive stones I mentioned, they weren't just found lying around. They were carefully selected and transported with incredible precision. 
they weren't just found lying around. These stones were quarried miles away in a location that was difficult to access. The Inca had to devise ingenious methods to move these massive stones across rivers, valleys, and up steep mountainsides. They were quarried miles away and somehow transported up the mountain. This feat required not only physical strength, but also a deep understanding of engineering and logistics. It's a mystery that continues to intrigue historians and archeologists. And we're not talking about pebbles here, people. These stones are massive, some weighing as much as 200 tons. The sheer size and weight of these stones make their transportation and placement an incredible achievement. We're talking about stones weighing up to 200 tons. Just imagine the effort and coordination it took to move these behemoths. It's a testament to the ingenuity and determination of the Inca people, and it makes all in Taitambo a place of wonder and admiration. We've all heard of Stonehenge, right? Those iconic standing stones in England? Pretty impressive, huh? Well, imagine Stonehenge on steroids and then airlift it to the top of a mountain. That's the level of engineering we're dealing with at Allentaytambo. Moving a 200-ton stone on flat ground would be a Herculean task even today. But the Inca weren't content with just moving these behemoths. They hauled them up steep mountainsides, carved them with incredible precision, and fit them together so tightly that you couldn't slide a credit card between them. No mortar, no cranes, no problem. It's enough to make a modern engineer break out in a cold sweat. So how did they do it? Get ready for some serious Inca ingenuity. Section four, Inca ingenuity ramps, rollers, and a whole lot of teamwork. Okay, let's get down to the nitty gritty. The Inca civilization was known for its incredible architectural feats. And one of the most fascinating aspects of their construction techniques involves the use of ramps, rollers, and a whole lot of teamwork. While we don't have all the answers, those Inca were sneaky like that, hiding their secrets in plain sight. Archaeologists and historians have some pretty solid theories about how they pulled off this monumental feat. Imagine the sheer scale of the operations they must have conducted. Picture this, thousands of workers using ropes, logs, and sheer muscle power to move these massive stones. It wasn't just a few people, it was an entire community coming together, each person playing a crucial role in the process. They probably built huge earthen ramps leading up the mountain using rollers and levers to reduce friction and inch those stones along. These ramps were engineering marvels in their own right, carefully designed to handle the immense weight of the stones. Think of it as a giant team building exercise, but instead of trust falls, they're moving rocks the size of small houses. The coordination and synchronization required were immense, much like a well-oiled cricket team working in perfect harmony. But it wasn't just brute force. The Inca were incredibly strategic in their approach. The Inca were masters of observation and had a deep understanding of their environment. They meticulously studied the terrain, the weather patterns, and the natural resources available to them. They knew how to use the terrain to their advantage, minimizing the effort needed to move those stones. Just like a cricket team uses the pitch conditions to their benefit, the Inca used every natural feature to make their task easier. They were like the MacGyvers of the Andes. Their ingenuity didn't stop at just moving stones. It extended to every aspect of their construction, from the precise cutting of stones to fit perfectly without mortar, to the creation of complex water channels. The Inca demonstrated an unparalleled level of skill and creativity. So, the next time you watch a cricket match and marvel at the teamwork and strategy on display, remember the Inca. Their legacy of ingenuity and collaboration is a testament to what humans can achieve when they work together towards a common goal. Whether it's building a monumental structure or winning a cricket match, it's all about ramps, rollers, and a whole lot of teamwork. The story of the Inca is a powerful reminder that with the right tools, strategies, and a united team, even the most daunting challenges can be overcome. Their achievements continue to inspire and amaze us, much like the thrilling moments in a cricket game. And just like in cricket, where sportsmanship and respect for the game are paramount, the Inca's respect for their environment and their collaborative spirit were key to their success. It's a lesson that transcends time and continues to resonate with us today. Section five, cracking the code. How did they line up those stones? Moving the stones was one thing, but how in the world did they get them to fit together so perfectly? 
We're talking about stones cut with such precision that they interlock without any gaps. It's enough to make you want to grab a chisel and start inspecting for alien technology. While we haven't found any extraterrestrial tools lying around yet, the Inca clearly had some tricks up their sleeves. They likely used a combination of stone hammers, chisels made from harder stones, and even sand to grind and polish those surfaces. And don't forget good old-fashioned trial and error. Imagine the patience and skill required to shape and fit those stones with such accuracy. It's like a giant three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle, only with much higher stakes. Section six, the Inca engineering masters of their time. So there you have it. While we may never know the exact methods used to build all in Titambo, one thing is clear, the Inca were architectural geniuses. They didn't just build structures, they created masterpieces that have stood the test of time, surviving earthquakes, conquests, and even the curiosity of modern day explorers like me. Their ability to move and shape massive stones with such precision, using only the tools and resources available to them, is a testament to their ingenuity, determination, and deep understanding of the natural world. The story of Alante Tambo is a reminder that even in the face of seemingly insurmountable challenges, human ingenuity knows no bounds. It's a legacy that continues to inspire awe and wonder in all who visit this incredible site. Section seven, keep exploring. So the next time you're struggling to assemble that Ikea furniture, or wondering how they built that skyscraper down the street, remember the Inca and their incredible achievements at Alentetambo. It's a reminder that with a little or a lot of ingenuity and teamwork, anything is possible. Now I want to hear from you. What do you think was the most ingenious aspect of Inca engineering? What other ancient mysteries would you like to uncover? Share your thoughts in the comments below and let's keep the spirit of exploration alive.